Hi everybody. Uh, in the three videos that I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to be presenting here, I will give you some introductory remarks on educating for widening participation and inclusion in higher education. Uh, in this video, I will briefly ex explain why widening participation and inclusion became a concern in higher education. In the second video, I will show an image that highlights what areas of concern widening participation and inclusion highlights. And finally, in the third video, I will address some reasons for why widening participation and inclusion is important, as well as some critical concerns. At least I will present uh, why uh, these reasons why people have said that widening participation are, and inclusion is important and why some are critical of it. Uh, this course will look at how universities and other institutions of higher education and we as educators have a, as how we have a responsibility to create good conditions for the widening participation, participation of diverse students as well as working towards student inclusion. This responsibility comes from the realization that universities have long marginalized or hindered certain people, which in turn has limited their opportunities to pursue education and research in universities and other institutions of higher education. Especially in the 1960s, universities had, had, had to take into account political currents that sought justice for marginalized people in society, Largely due to student activism, they began to reevaluate their teaching, research, and structures to take into account post-colonial racial, gender, disability, and sexuality perspectives, just to mention a few. As a result, there was an increased effort to work towards widening participation and inclusion. Also, we need to recognize that there have been strong economic incentives to increase the workforce with, with capable and competent people in order to just to, in order to, just to mention one thing, sustain economic growth, uh, then by widening the pool of people who can participate in higher education, you are accordingly developing the workforce quantitatively. Internationally, efforts have been made to implement widening participation in various ways. However, however, I will just take Sweden as an example. In Sweden, the issue of widening recruitment had been an influential issue in higher education since the early 2000s. The following formulation in the Swedish Higher Education Act came into force in 2002. Higher education institutions shall actively promote and widen recruitment to higher education. What was meant by widening recruitment was ambiguous. However, it was generally interpreted as at the time to mean that higher education institutions aim to increase recruitment among socially marginalized citizens and ethnic minorities. A 2001 Department of Education report stated that all people in a democratic society have a right to knowledge. Thus, instead of higher education belonging to a privileged elite, higher education would be open, meaning that it welcome everyone equally, regardless of background, ethnicity, place of residence, gender, or disability. The diversity that exists in society must be reflected to a greater extent in higher education, both in terms of students, teachers, and researchers. The open university, university is open to the outside world. Recruitment to higher education should therefore be increased, equalized, and extended to new groups. Such wording is also found in other national and international policy documents. However, the emphasis on getting more students from diverse backgrounds highlighted another challenge. These people potentially have a special, ne special needs or can come with specific experiences that affected teaching in some way. What widening participation especially brings into focus are notions of normality. Whether we want to admit it or not, we are all shaped by our contexts. These, in turn, have established certain norms, beliefs, and practices that more or less that we more or less consciously shape our perception of reality and guide our actions. By addressing widening participation and inclusion, we are bringing this process of socialization into focus while at the same time problematizing it. It is recognized that notions of normality can lead to exclusion, disregard, or ignorance, but it can also lead to discrimination against students. For this reason, 
talking about widening participation requires that we talk honestly about our notions of normality and problematize them in light of what we perceive as different. This means that I, an educated white male with a job living in a white majority society, must recognize that my experience is different from that of a woman, a person with a disabling health condition, condition or a member of a minority. This in turn will help me to take this into account in my teaching so that I can strive to make it more inclusive. The focus then becomes on making the teaching intersectional, intercultural, and non-oppressive. See you in the next video.